The divide between the guardians of our society and those they serve seems wider now than it's been in my lifetime. But no one can doubt being a law enforcement officer is becoming increasingly dangerous. Ferguson, Baltimore, Baton Rouge, Dallas, Milwaukee. Just a few of the many places in our country where violent protests have been blamed on members of the thin blue line. Certain members of the so-called mainstream media, some political leaders, and those who profit from discord have all but put targets on the backs of those who wear a badge. Milwaukee Sheriff David Clark has spent his entire 38-year career in the cause of justice. By any measure, he's an American hero, and he tells it like it is. When you look back at the time that I was growing up, Milwaukee was a middle-class city, a lot of industry, a lot of jobs, a lot of well-paying, family-supporting jobs. And then when the industrial uh, economy started to leave, replaced by the tech age or the information age, all that industry went away. Milwaukee became a Rust Belt city. So you're losing all of these, all this, that's the middle class. That's the foundation of a strong community, a strong society. You know, and that's been replaced, uh, especially in the black community, you know, by the single parent household. And, and all of the things that have fallen off uh, from that have been devastating for Milwaukee. So what that meant it was we were putting more on the backs of the police. You know, when I started in policing compared to today, <laughs> it was easy. And you didn't see it as easy back then, but it was because you had a more stable community. You know, the police were seen as, you know, guardians and, and protectors. The officers knew the people in their squad area, their beat area, if they walked the beat, even in, in, in a patrol car. So there was a connection. There was a familiarity. You didn't have the single parent ratio that we have today. 70% of black kids are born into a single family home, 70%. When I grew up as a kid, first of all, you know who my first authority figure was? My dad. And my dad demanded discipline of me, demanded. He didn't ask for it, demanded it. He taught me how to respect authority. So when I left the house during the day and I went to school, in grade school, you know who became the authority figure? The teacher. They were an authority figure. And so when I looked, I saw my dad. I said, that's the authority figure. These young kids don't respect their parents, don't respect teachers at school, don't respect, uh, respect other adults in their lives as authority figures. Now they run up against the ultimate authority figure, the cop. And when that meets that undisciplined young kid with no respect for authority meets that authority figure in the form of a uniform and a badge, the uniform's gotta win. I'll tell you why, because we are on the front lines of order liberty. We have to enforce the law. We can't back down. Teachers back down now. And the kid sees that. He says, teacher, I, you know, they'll, they'll curse the teacher out in the classroom. All right? They'll do the same thing on the street. So we have to win. We have to win because ordered liberty is at stake. The cops make millions of stops a year across the country. Traffic stops, field interview stops. They go to calls for service. Millions. Rarely do they have to use force. Very rarely. It is an aberration when they have to use deadly force. This is a rare occurrence. Now it's been heightened and magnified by the media. This is a breakdown of the underclass society. But that's, that's the heavy lifting. It's easier to just slam the police. We're on the front lines. We're the most visible symbol of government in the community. It's not the elected official. They're rarely seen, right? Cops are there every day. Cops have to deal with some unpleasant things for people, so we're an easy target. Whose lives matter? Black lives matter! Whose lives matter? Black lives matter! This is a political construct. This has nothing to do with black lives. It's an ideology. It's a dangerous, hateful, destructive ideology. And it's a very anti-police ideology. These are purveyors of hate toward the American police officer. Our city is taking our streets back. Your badges no longer scare us. Our city is behind us. Hey, Baltimore! Hey, Baltimore! 
This is not being presented as the symbol of the new civil rights struggle. Compassion for criminals. We've gone from Rosa Parks, who was an icon in the civil rights struggle, Emmett Till, Dr. Martin Luther King, and others. We've gone from that to Mike Brown, to Eric Garner, to Freddie Gray, to Sandra Bland. Those are icons in the civil rights struggle. No, no, those are criminals engaged in behavior that contributed toward what happened to them at the end. That's what bothers me more, is that, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we've come a long way in the civil rights struggle. There was a time, in, 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 and it wasn't that long ago, it was difficult for blacks to vote. There's an ugly chapter in this country. We don't have that anymore. What can we do to keep this going, this civil rights struggle, as a political construct? And so now you gotta resort to criminals. And I say, man, how did we fall this far this fast? You know, from Rosa Parks to Mike Brown. The only way you know about this movement or what they claim is happening is through the media. The media knows better. This stuff has all been debunked, that we kill more young black males in police interactions than any other race. It's not even close. It's not even close. If it were close, I'd say, well, you know, it's a coin flip. By a two-to-one margin, more white males are killed in police interactions than black males. Two to one. It's not even close. The media's role really should be responsible reporting. Look at the data, look at the research, and say, hey, they're making this claim, but it's all emotion. We understand, I understand it's the emotion out of these things. But here's what the research shows. They won't print that, then they won't tell that side. I mean, a supporter or someone who doesn't support them. I simply report on Black Lives Matter. Do you condemn the anti-police rhetoric coming from this hateful ideology. As a journalist sitting here on television, I don't have to condemn anyone, that, anything. That is something that well, you I do. ask well, I other do. people around the country. I that, condemn their them jobs to condemn just that. like I condemn the hateful the ideology out of groups like the KKK, all right? I condemn it. This has fueled and fanned the flames of this anger toward the American police officer. There's only one group in America one time that truly cares about the lives of black people in these urban ghettos. And it's the American police officer who goes down there on a daily basis, puts their life on the line to protect who? Black people. And I've been all across this country talking to cops. I say cops, I'm old school. I'm a cop, I'm a career cop. As I tell people, I'm a career cop. Uh, they're beleaguered right now. We didn't get into this to die, but we volunteer and we're willing to make that sacrifice. That's why I call it the ultimate sacrifice. We're willing to do that to make our community safer. However, we gotta know it's worth it. These men and women are leaving behind spouses, children, siblings, parents, and they wanna know, hey, this was worth it. So when I see what's going on today, and I go to the law enforcement officer's memorial wall in Washington, D.C., I stand in the middle of that plaza and I say to myself, what must they be thinking? 20,000 names of law enforcement officers killed in line of duty. And I'd say, what must they be thinking with all this stuff going on now? This constant slamming of the police, defaming us, mischaracterizing us, slandering us. If you lost a sibling, if you lost a spouse, if you lost a son or daughter killed in line of duty as a cop, what must you be thinking? Their sacrifice was in vain. I know cops. Cops are good people. Are we perfect? Not by any stretch of the imagination. Are, are law enforcement agencies perfect? Not even close. Being imperfect is part of the human condition. You know what I expect from my people? I send them out every day, and they know it. Excellence, not perfection. Excellence. And from law enforcement officers all across this country, we get excellence. Hopefully our next president will be the kind of leader who sets an example of respect for those who protect and serve in uniform and who admires them as much as I do. For Frontlines on NRA News, I'm Oliver North.